Hi. In this video, we'll be learning about the hardware of the internet, the physical systems that the internet is built on. So what is the internet? Well, the internet is a network that connects individual networks. What do I mean when I say network? Well, introducing networks. So a network is a group of two or more computer systems that are somehow linked together. So let's look at a simple network. Here we have two computers and they share a link. That just means we can get information from this computer, send it over the link, and it is received on this computer. So that's great. That's a simple network. It's two computers that are connected. Now what happens when we have four computers? How can we connect all of these? Well, one solution is to simply connect every pair of computers. So now each computer shares a link with every other computer. Now this works, but the problem is this is not scalable. When we get to the point where we have hundreds, thousands, millions of devices, it's not realistic for every device to have a link to every single other device. So the solution is to introduce a middleman. We call it a router. So in this scenario, each device only needs one connection. It needs to connect to the router. Then the router takes care of actually forwarding each request to the intended recipient. So if the top left computer wanted to send a message to the bottom left computer, it would tell the router that, and the router would forward along that message. And this system is great for small, simple networks. A single router can connect computers that are close together, either in one room or in one building. Now the problem is, there exist several of these small, simple networks, and we need to be able to connect them to each other. So let's say one of these is your home, one of these is your school, and one of these is a coffee shop. And we need the ability for two computers in separate local networks to send messages to each other. So the solution there is to add another router that connects each of the routers. Now there exists a path from a computer in one network all the way to a computer in a separate network. Now this solution is good for a small number of simple networks. But the problem is, once we have too many simple networks, one router can't handle it. It's too much. So now we get to the internet. Now the internet is not one big router that connects all the individual networks. The internet is actually itself a massive network of routers. And each router is not connected to every single other router. It's only connected to a few of them. So it ends up being this complicated interconnected system of routers. So that way, when these individual tiny networks, say a house or a coffee shop, wants to connect to the internet, it just needs to pick one router and connect to it. And so these routers that the individual networks connect to are provided by what's called an internet service provider, so someone like Comcast or AT&T. Now we don't really have to worry about what's going on inside this crazy network of routers. Right now we're only worried about how data is being transmitted in the individual networks. So for now, let's just abstract all that away, call it the internet, and just know that it is a massive network that connects these individual simple networks. So that's what we mean when we say that the internet is a network connecting individual networks. It is a big network of routers that just has these endpoints that you can connect to. So really what we're concerned with is sending information. That is the core functionality of the internet. We want to be able to get this smiley face from the computer on the left all the way to the computer on the right. But what's actually happening there? We're not actually sending a physical smiley face across the network. Instead, we're going to use the power of digital information. We're going to use the power of encoding to represent any information we want to send as zeros and ones, and that's what we send across the network. So at a symbolic level, the internet is really just a way to get zeros and ones from point A to point B. But at the physical level, how is that actually happening? How can we represent a zero and one inside the network? Well, this is where the internet hardware comes in. So we mainly use three methods to send information from one computer to the other. And those three methods are electricity, light, and radio. So how do we send bits with electricity? So you may have seen ethernet cables. And ethernet cables are simply copper wires that we're able to hook up to a computer and send electricity through. So the pros of sending bits with electricity is that it's cheap. And the cons are that it only covers medium distances. We're not able to send bits very far on an electric cable before the signal starts to fade. So the physical way that we send bits using electricity is we just set the wire to be a high voltage to represent a 1, and we set the wire to have a low voltage to represent a 0. And just switching off between high and low voltages, these computers are able to tell whether a 0 or a 1 is being sent. How about sending bits with light? Well, to do that, we use fiber optic cables. And these are the big guns. These are the connections that are going across oceans, going across continents. Most of the distance covered on the internet is through fiber optic cables. So the pros to fiber optic cables is they can travel very long distances. It can travel across the floor of the ocean. And the cons is that it's very expensive. This is why you're not really going to use it for your home network or for your coffee shop. 
Instead, this is what the internet service providers are using to transfer information between the internet routers. So how do we physically send bits with light? Well, all we have to do is set the connection to have a bright light for one and a dim light or no light for zero. So the computers can simply look at the state of the connection and if it's bright, it's a one, and if it's dim, it's a zero. How about radio waves? So how do devices send bits using radio waves? Well, real life examples of sending bits with radio waves include a Wi-Fi router, which you probably have in your home or your school, and a cell tower. So this is what cell phones are using to send bits through the air using radio waves. So the pros with radio waves are that it's wireless. And the cons are that it only covers a very short distance. You have to be pretty close to a cell tower or to a Wi-Fi router in order for your signal to be picked up. So how do radio waves physically send zeros and ones? Well, if a computer wants to send a one, it just produces a high frequency wave, so the wave is very tight and close together. If it wants to send a zero, it produces a low frequency wave, so the wave is really far apart. So those are the three main ways that we send bits using computers. Let's look at an example of how a short message is sent over a connection. Now, this connection is purely symbolic. It could be just light, it could be just radio wave, it could be a combination of them. In some way, these two computers are connected and they are able to set the state of that connection to a one or a zero. So let's send the one. That could either mean a high frequency wave or a high voltage, but this computer sends the one and the computer notices and says, hey, I see a one. Then it sends a zero, it notices and sees a zero, changes it to one, the computer on the right notices and receives a one, and then it sends a zero and the computer on the right receives a zero. Perfect, we have a message that was reliably sent from one computer to another. What happens though if we have three zeros in a row? In this case, we can set the wire to a one and the computer notices and records a one. Now we set it to a zero and then we set it to zero again and then we set it to zero again. Since there was no change in the wire, the computer didn't know to record any bit. Finally, we send that last one and the message received is different from the message sent. This is a problem. So to fix this, we introduce a clock. With this clock, both computers can agree to send and record bits at the same rate. So let's say we're going to send a bit per second. Now, one second goes by and we set it to a one. Another second goes by and the wire is set to a zero. Another second and it's still zero, it records a new bit. Another second goes by, records a new bit. And lastly, sets it to a one and we are able to receive the full message. Now the problem is, one bit per second is incredibly slow. Luckily, computers can move a lot faster than one bit per second. So if we want to download a song or a video or a program in a matter of seconds or minutes, we need to increase our bandwidth. So introducing bandwidth. Bandwidth is the capacity of data transfer in a system, and it is measured by bit rate. So you can think of bandwidth as the speed of data transfer in the network, and it's measured by bit rate. Bit rate is the number of bits that a system can send in one second. So an example of low bandwidth might be something like we just saw, one bit per second. If we want a really high bandwidth, we gotta increase it up to five megabits per second. And that's actually pretty reasonable. Several networks have at least five megabits per second as a bit rate. There's one more important term when we're talking about networks and sending data, and that is latency. So latency is the time it takes for a single bit to get from sender to receiver. Now, when it comes to latency, we want low latency. If we have a low latency, that is a very fast connection. Now, fiber optic cable has the best latency because it's using light, and so it's traveling close to the speed of light. Using a fiber optic cable, one bit can travel a full kilometer in only five microseconds. With ethernet, on the other hand, it takes about 300 microseconds to travel one kilometer. And we should note that ethernet connections are typically shorter than one kilometer. But should the connection be one kilometer, that is how long a bit would take to travel. So, to recap, a network is simply a group of two or more computers that are somehow connected and they're typically connected through routers. And what do these connections look like? How do computers actually send bits from one computer to the other? Well, one way is electricity, for example, ethernet. Another way is light, for example, the fiber optic cables. And lastly, we can use radio, and this is what's being used in Wi-Fi and cellular. No matter the connection, all you're doing is sending bits, and it can be through radio waves, it can be through voltages, it can be through light, but that is what it boils down to, is that you're encoding the information you wanna send in bits, sending it over the network, and then the zeros and ones will be reconstructed to produce the original data at the other end. Also to recap three important terms, we have bandwidth, and that is the capacity of data transfer in a system, and that is measured by bitrate. Bitrate is the number of bits that a system can send in one second, and that can range from bits per second to kilobits per second, megabits per second, even gigabits per second. And lastly, we have latency, and latency is the time it takes for a bit to get from a sender to the receiver. 
and that largely depends on the material that it's being sent through. And so these are the physical systems that the internet is built upon. This is the physical hardware that is used to send bits across the globe.